Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the solubility curve. And it's just basic understanding of a solubility curve. So we're not going to do any calculations, just looking at what is a solubility curve and how to actually read one. So the basic idea of a solubility curve is that you cannot continue to dissolve unlimited amounts of solute into a solvent, okay? You cannot dissolve unlimited solute. At some point, your solution is, is going to be totally filled with solute and you're not going to be able to dissolve anymore. Okay, and the example I really like to use for this is chocolate milk. Okay, and technically chocolate milk is a, called a colloid. It's a different type of mixture than a solution, but I think the visual is there. Okay, so um, if you've ever made chocolate milk because you're a normal human being, and of course you want to drink chocolate milk because it's delicious. Okay, you have your milk, you add your chocolate syrup, and you mix, 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 mix. Okay, at some point, no matter how much extra chocolate I add, and no matter how much I'm like frantically mixing my chocolate milk, I'm going to get this sludge at the bottom of my chocolate milk, okay? And the reason why is because I have dissolved as much chocolate as possible into my chocolate milk. It doesn't matter. I can do whatever I can to the chocolate milk. I can shake it up, I can stir it. I'm not gonna dissolve, dissolve any more of that um, chocolate syrup, okay? So, the solubility curve basically tells us exactly how much solute can be dissolved in a, an amount of solvent. Okay, so that's what a solubility curve actually tells us. Solubility curve tells us how much solute can be dissolved, which is very, very useful, okay? And it's a really easy graph, okay? So on my x-axis, I have temperature. And it's in degrees Celsius because Fahrenheit is garbage in chemistry and science. We don't use Fahrenheit, okay? So get used to it. Celsius, here we go. And on your, on your y-axis, okay, going up, you have, how do I write sideways here, grams of solute that's dissolved per 100 grams of water. Okay, so how many grams of solute can actually be dissolved for every 100 grams of water? Not too complex, okay? And then you'll just see, well, it, it, <laughs> it gets a little uh, messy, so you have to be careful about looking at a solubility curve, but just for, easy sake, right? Oh good, my dogs, they're very interested in solubility curves, okay? You'd have a line and it would tell you exactly which compound it is and you'd be able to follow and see, you know, at 20 degrees Celsius, exactly whatever, 50 grams of sodium chloride could be dissolved. Shoot, I forgot to add the fact that there are three different parts to kind of read on your solubility curve. So, that's my dog, he's great. Uh, if you're actually on the line, whatever line it is of a substance that you're looking at, you are what we would consider saturated. Okay, so if at any point you land exactly on the line, then that substance is completely saturated. It cannot take any more of your solute to be dissolved, okay? If you are below the line at any point, you are unsaturated. If you are above the line, you are what's called super saturated. And you're going to do a very fun lab um, dealing with a super saturated solution. So. Uh, you should be able to tell, right, comparing on any type of solubility curve, if a point is here, 
and it's below your solubility curve line, then it's unsaturated. If you are able to find a point exactly on the line, saturated. A point above the line, super saturated. You get it. So here's what an actual solubility curve looks like. Don't freak out, <laughs> okay? Um, it puts a whole bunch of different compounds on the same graph, which actually makes it nice because then you don't have to look at 72 graphs. You can just look at the one and try and figure out what's going on, okay? So um, you can look and see, okay? I can ask about potassium nitrate. So you'd have to look and find the line for potassium nitrate. Aha, here it is, potassium nitrate. So out of all of the graph, I don't care about anything else except this line right here, okay? Because I'm only looking at potassium nitrate. And if I had a question of how many grams of potassium nitrate can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius, I come over to my temperature, find 40 degrees, go right up, it's right there, is where I hit my potassium nitrate, come over, and it's somewhere between 60 and 70, 65-ish grams. So I can dissolve 65 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius. Okay? It's, you're just looking at a graph, you're just identifying you know, X and Y axes, and you're finding the correct compound that is going to be soluble in water. That's it, okay? Um, the one other thing to notice is most of these lines travel up, okay? Except for a very select few. Some of them, as the temperature increases, they go down, okay? If you notice, these guys, as temperature increases, the solubility goes down. Everything else, as temperature increases, the solubility goes up. So what gives, okay? If you notice, okay, the things that go down in solubility as temperature goes up are gases. The things that go up as temperature also increases are solids, okay? So you should be able to identify um, pretty easily if the solubility of a substance is going up as the temperature rises, it's a solid. If the solubility is going down as temperature rises, it's a gas, okay? So make sure you understand that difference. Um, and this, is, this actually has some really interesting practical applications. So for example, no one likes drinking a like a hot, Diet Coke or a hot Pepsi or something, right? You don't enjoy that. And there's actually a really good reason why. The gas that's dissolved, it's a carbonated drink, right? So you actually have a gas that's dissolved into your soda to make it carbonated. The hotter it gets, so the hotter your drink gets, the less and less carbonation that's going to be dissolved in your drink. Your drink is going to feel flat because less of that carbonation is dissolved in it. You're not going to enjoy drinking it as much. Colder beverages have a higher concentration of that carbonation in it. So you're, you like it more typically. Okay. All right. I've talked to you enough. You know how to read a solubility graph. Okay. Temperature in Celsius on the x-axis. How many grams of solute can be dissolved in always 100 grams of water on my y-axis. And you can just look and see. All right, good luck.